Hey guys, we're back. We're gonna do the third video for the U-Scope Advanced Functions. So we're gonna cover a couple of topics. We're gonna cover using a trigger window. We're gonna cover using the deep record, which you're going to hear referred to as the position full feature. And we're also gonna to touch on using the sample speeds to make the best out of the full position feature. So let me start off with our sample speeds. So we're gonna go ahead and turn our U-scope back on. Now in the first video, I touched on where sample speeds were. So I just wanna go back through and show you guys again. So we're gonna go into menu, scroll to options, open the options with okay. And here you'll see sample speed. They're listed as normal and fast. You can hear them referred to as uh, normal and fast, slow and fast, normal and over sample. On normal sample speed, it's going to display 300 consecutive sample points on the display. The memory buffer is going to store 4,000 sample points. In normal mode, the buffer stores 10 screens worth of data points. Okay. So that's gonna give you a lot of time, but maybe not a lot of detail in that time. If you go into the fast, it's oversample the signal by a factor of 10. The full buffer is resized to fit the screen. And there are actually 10 samples for every sample displayed on the screen. So what this is saying is, is we're now zooming in on the actual data points of the waveform. So that's gonna be better for your deep record in most cases. If you're looking for specific fine detail, that in my opinion is gonna be your best option for the deep record we're gonna go over here in a second. Before we get to that, I do wanna cover this trigger window. The trigger window is useful for complex pulse signals with varying amplitude, okay? Best example I can give you right now is AC wheel speed sensors. It is sometimes difficult if you're trying to track a intermittent wheel speed dropout in a specific range of speed. It would be useful to use the trigger window because we can then look at a range of threshold versus a single point. With your regular trigger threshold, you're only capturing waveform as they cross this line, okay? If we open up our window on the trigger, which we're gonna do, we're gonna menu, trigger, we're gonna highlight window, and then we're gonna use our left and right arrows to open that window, okay? If we open the window, and you can open it up pretty big. If you do that, it's going to allow us to capture things that maybe not captured in a single point trigger. Again, most of the time it's varying amplitude stuff. Um, depending on how a purge valve works under load or maybe even the uh, fuel control valve on a direct injection pump, just various things. It's not really common that you're gonna need it, but when you do, it's gonna be useful to know where it's at. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn a waveform on I'm going to change our trigger type to normal. I'm going to go back into the menu. Highlight trigger, press OK to open it. We're going to do trigger window and we're going to use our left and right arrows. We're going to open that trigger window. You need the meat of the waveform in the window. So you can't really have your max amplitude be inside of the waveform. So in this case, I'm going to now need to move my trigger and we can highlight trigger level, and we can use our up and down arrow, our left and right arrows to change it. Once I have the window centered on the meat of the waveform, not capturing a peak or a valley for max or min amplitude, it will then continue to update as normal. And you see it's, we're doing our normal trigger, it's gonna capture a screen, then move, capture a screen, then move. If I change to hold, I mean, excuse me, our single trigger where it's going to capture one waveform and hold it, you can really see. So to reactivate that, we're going to use our A key, which is our pause, and we're going to capture another one. So this waveform is not the best to demonstrate this with, but it kind of is because it allows me to show you the inner workings of it. 
Again, it's not something you're gonna use every day, but when the time comes and you wanna use it, you now know where it's at and it will make much more sense to you when you get in the situation where you need it. So I'm gonna quickly go back into menu. I'm gonna close my trigger window back to a single point trigger. And you'll, you see the window is showing delta of window, zero millivolts. That means I'm back to a single point trigger, which is the most common trigger that we use. Okay, so we're gonna close out of this. Now I'm gonna get into the most useful feature there is on the U-scope. It is also the most difficult to master. So I'm gonna go over it several times. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our trigger back into normal. I'm gonna put my trigger level back where I normally keep it just so we can start from scratch. Using my waveform simulator, if you wanna look at a long time base and then be able to zoom back in, that is the position full feature. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load up our time. I like to use 200 milliseconds per division. That gives me two seconds of total time. That's a lot of RPM out of this engine. All right, if there's gonna be a glitch, I'm gonna find it. You have to use a trigger, whether it is normal or single. You also have to pause it. Not a big deal if you're using a single trigger mode because it's gonna capture one full buffer and pause for you. With the normal, you're gonna wanna pause it yourself. Now it's kinda of hard to see, but if you watch the screen after I hit okay, you're gonna see that it scrolls through and updates one more time. It's kinda of hard to catch, but you will see it. So what we're gonna do at this point is, I've now paused it, all right? I'm going to use my voltage and my time to essentially zoom in on my waveform, okay? Once I have the way I wanna view it, I'm gonna scroll over to the position key. If you press okay one time, you will notice that the position soft key is now flashing. You have activated the position full function. This is essentially going to allow you to scroll through that entire two seconds of waveform you've stored in the buffer. Okay, by using the left and right arrows while the position key is flashing, we can now scroll through the waveform. If you look at the top of the screen, our horizontal position is going to be zero. If you go to the right, it's going to be positive time. If you go to the left, it's going to be negative time. That's how you'll keep track where you're at. You can literally scroll all the way back the way we have this set up currently, to positive one second, and we can go all the way forward to minus one second of our horizontal position. All right, there was our horizontal position right there. Okay. Now, if you get into scrolling and you're in a very deep waveform, something that you're looking at a lot of time on and you lose your position, you do not have to scroll all the way back looking for your center point. There is a go home feature. While position is still highlighted and flashing, if you press and hold OK for about a second, you'll notice my center point snaps back to the center of the screen. I'm now showing zero on my horizontal position indicator. I know exactly where I'm at and I can scroll through again. All right, to scroll through again, I'm gonna highlight position, press okay one time, position keys flashing. That means I'm in full feature. It's going to allow me to scroll and review. Okay, if I get lost, I can press and hold okay. It will take me back. So let's start from scratch on this one more time. So I'm gonna turn my unit off, which you can also do if you get lost in the waveform. Just turn the unit off, turn the unit back on, we start over. So unit boots up, we're looking at my cam signal. So what I wanna do is, I wanna up my time. Okay, that's an unreadable pattern on this screen but that's a lot of data to store for me to review later. So what we can do is, is we've stored this data. I'm gonna pause the screen. Notice I use the A key, pause the screen. 
Now, I'm going to change my voltage and my time to get my best view. All right, so now I can see individual reluctors on this trigger wheel. Okay. Scroll over to position, press OK one time. Once the position key is flashing, now we can scroll. Okay. If I were to hit OK one time and leave, my horizontal position is going to be off the screen. If that happens, just turn the unit off, turn the unit back on. You've lost your center place, but when you restart the unit, it will pick right back up. As we scroll through, we're looking for, you know, our glitch, our dropout, whatever the case may be. All right, so I see a little bit of fuzz here. So if I wanted to at this point, I could save my data, right? Or I can scroll over. Once I have the screen I want to, I can scroll over to menu, break out my meters, break out my cursors, make my measurements based off what I saw in this deep record, okay? When I'm done, I can go back into position, hit review, and I can keep scrolling. Okay? If that wasn't what I was looking for, okay, I did my cursor measurement. I only had a three or four millivolt drop. That's not really a glitch. That's noise. Let's keep looking. I can turn it back on. All right? And again, if I get lost to where I'm at, just press and hold okay with position highlighted. And we go right back to center, highlight the position, press OK one more time. We're back in review mode. So you can bounce in and out of it. All right, if I center back up, release the position, change my time back to 200 milliseconds, that's all the data I stored on that one collection. Okay? I can zoom in to whatever I want to review. Now remember, the more information in the buffer and the further you zoom in, you're going to start to see a little bit of distortion. Uh, you will run into the buffer limit and the sample limit. It will start to distort your waveform a little bit. So this is extremely useful. You can use it for uh, cam sensors, crank sensors. If you're doing a relative compression test, you know, the cranking compression test with the amp clamp, you can record a lot of data on the compression strokes and then go back and review it. The same thing with doing the uh, battery system test, doing the battery voltage drop, where you crank the vehicle, see what our battery voltage drop was, see how long it takes for the uh, voltage to come back up, the alternator to turn on and, and put the vehicle into charge mode. You can do all that. So any waveform you want to capture in deep mode, you can do it. I highly suggest you familiarize yourself with this full position feature. It is the best feature on the tool. It is also the most difficult to use, as I said before. But once you got it, it really unlocks the full power of this tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on position, press and hold OK to make sure I'm snapped back. So we'll go through it one more time just to make sure you guys got it. Start from scratch. Turn the unit on, hook my leads up. I'm capturing a waveform. OK, that's what I want to see. Let's increase my time. 200 milliseconds per division is about two seconds of time. So I'm going to press OK. I mean, sorry, I'm going to press the A key to pause. We're paused. I'm going to modify my zoom using my voltage and my time. That's pretty good for me to review right there at 10 milliseconds. I'm going to highlight position. Press OK one time. Once it flashes, now I can use my left and right arrows to scroll through the waveform. Once I get to where I want to be, say we want to take some measurements at 300 milliseconds. Press OK to deactivate the, the scrolling function. I can then go in, turn on my meters, or excuse me, turn on my cursors, but you see it's updated my meters, so I can use the meters. Turn on my cursors. Let 
and actually take some measurements of this deep record. This really outlines the amount of power that this small U-scope has. This is something I want everybody to get used to using because it's the best feature on the tool. If I want to go back in and continue scrolling without making any changes, go back over to position. Notice we have our position soft key highlighted. Press OK one time, it's flashing. Again, if you pay attention to where your zoom frame is, so this is going to show us what frame we're in. We're minus 460 milliseconds off our center point. All right, so I'm going the wrong direction. So let's turn around and go back this way. We want to get closer to zero to get home. There's zero, there's home. See the horizontal? This dotted yellow line with the two triangles at top and bottom, that's our center point, okay? Again, if you get lost in there, simply press and hold OK. It will snap you right back to center. This really increases the power of this tool. So let's go ahead and bump this back up, 200 milliseconds. Release. We'll capture some more wave. I'm going to press hold. If you saw that cursor come by, it was updating our buffer. So now I'm going to put this to where I can view it, highlight position, scroll through. Incredible feature on something this small. And it's actually, once you get the hang of it, in my opinion, is one of the easiers to use on a standalone DSO. Um, as always, big thank you to the entire team at AES Wave for everything they do in the industry. Um, sponsoring these videos, making these tools, sponsoring training events that you guys go to, getting information and tools out to us as best as can be. Uh, I have one more video I'm going to do on the U-Scope. It's coming out. It is going to be a live case study misfire from start to finish diagnosing a misfire using only the U-Scope. Uh, look for that video. I hope to get it done pretty quickly. But hopefully with these three videos now, the basic and the two advanced features, you guys can get the most out of this tool and really use it for what it is. Um, it is a very powerful diagnostic tool, and I hope you guys get to use it, and it makes your life a lot easier. So thank you for your time. Thank you to the guys at AES Wave. Look for the fourth video coming out. That's going to be the U-Scope uh, case study and live misfire diag. Thank you.